Aloha, welcome back to the Cyber Underground, where we dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches all of us in our everyday lives. Today, here again, I have my exceptional co-host, Mr. Andrew Lanning. Andrew, the security guy, hey. Hey, everybody. Aloha. Aloha. How's it? And we have a great guest for you today, Mr. Mike Faflin. Yeah, what's up, uh, Mike? I always to spell his name correctly. But a Navy know. man. Thanks, Dan. Navy. Navy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Thanks for having me on the Two show. Two Navy guys and a Marine, you know. So. Oh, well, see, don't judge me, all right? That's no judgey. I know you guys that's are a, Navy. That was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a yeah. long time You're ago. You're forgiven. Yeah. We love the Marines. <laughs> well, we have a purpose, right? And let's talk about your purpose. Yeah, right? you work for the man. U.S. Navy on the Cyber Protection Team, which wow. a lot of people don't even know exists. It's true. They don't advertise. We, we don't advertise. It's not like so. you do public service announcements. That's all I can yeah. say about that. No, okay. no, that's it. No, no. no. <laughs> yeah, you know how to commercial. Yeah, I, uh, Go ahead. So, yeah, I do. Uh, I do uh, defense uh, for the DoD, and um, I've had the opportunity uh, over a decade of doing not just defense but also offense. So I've gotten the oh. full information security perspective. Um, so I have a huge respect um, and security for, for pen testing because I got to do it on steroids with the government. So yeah, yeah. So call it to the government, you know, like which you can tell us all about, right? Yeah, right, right yeah. <laughs> we need to know the deep details, man. <laughs> no, but uh, it's it's been great. I think uh, a big limitation of a lot of uh, uh, security analysts is they don't understand the offensive side. So mm, as, as you do that, and beyond just pen testing, but having to really hide yourself, you know, through cyberspace, you can really respect and better. Uh, better analyze when an attack is happening on your network. So I've really appreciated that opportunity. And, um, yeah. Well, let's Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how do you? So you, you sit to, So today you get a console, or you get handed a, a threat, and you, you get to watch it move around and play and fight back. Or what's the guys going, man? What are you doing in there? So, can't uh, tell us, or you can't tell us. What so can you so tell I, us? What you so can? I like, <laughs> like any other, you know, manager sure. in uh, information security and. and the DOD actually has a lot more money than a lot of industry. Sure. Um, really? Cause, oh, they have well, my money. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. It's just yours. <laughs> no, but, uh, <laughs> but a lot of companies, you know, they, they just need to make the profit, you know. Right. But executives need the paycheck. But no, but uh, <laughs> th but when you have to decide. It's true, and that's, you, what, you, that's what's important to them. Like, competition's right? tough. So yeah, that's right. they just don't have the budget. So thankfully, uh, to, we. To afford the good tools. We decent one. Yeah. Thankfully, we're budgeting for this in our government. Yeah, we need it in government. I'm not I mean, saying it's government, perfect. Government, obviously, but government's a massive OP, target. There's, there's an OPM breach. So. I'm a victim of that. Yeah, so our information's yeah, already. Yeah. Thank you. And you too. I'm uh, sorry. There's somewhere. Yeah. yeah, thank you, OPM, by the way. Thank you so much. Mike's information is valuable. Mine's not, just so we're clear. <laughs> that's not true. You, you should go for someone that's uh, older with a big budget. Yeah, 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 yeah as, as if there's actually you money in the it. older word. Yeah, oh, it's no. fair. It's fair. It's fair. You started this. <laughs> just, so you, just so our audience knows, we're both older than Mike here, so that's okay. That's okay. You can bring out the old words. Right. You, you guys are 32 and, and I'm 18, right? Right, right, uh, yes. right. Exactly. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk about some kill chain, man. <laughs> can, you give us, uh, can you give us an example? I mean, this, this wanna cry came out, and we don't actually know if it was an email first, or if this was a network worm breach across you know multiple networks. What's the anatomy of just a basic ransomware attack, and how did wanna cry work with this? So, so ransomware is not complicated. It's just malicious software, which happens to uh, encrypt usually all the files on a hard drive and then demand a ransom, usually with Bitcoin. Um, what made WannaCry unique is, is not that it's some big innovation in ransomware, so much as the vast scope in which it propagated around the world um, because of the exploits it was using. And those exploits happened to be stolen by uh, and released by Shadow Brokers, uh, which is an unknown group. But that's what made uh, WannaCry so interesting. People tend to focus on the malware. Mm. And this goes right. across most texts. It's just easy to identify, so the media says, hey, let's talk about WannaCry. But really, it's the exploits which made this interesting, mm. because that enabled a couple hundred thousand, I'm not sure what the count's up to right now, uh, computers around the world all get ransomware. And uh, those exploits are Eternal Blue, and there's, there's a couple others. Now, we're looking at 200,000 systems the last count I saw. 
Uh, that's yeah, that's that a line all over right. 150 well, countries. Can we talk about the, me the me that SMB mechanism? So it's version one, version two. They're old. What, how does that work? What was right. it, what was it built about for? The Windows Server messaging block that yeah. was attacked in this vulnerability specifically. Yeah, but the old one. Right, and yeah. so the the old one. That's, that's and, the one I use. And there's a lot of <laughs> the facts <laughs> aren't the facts aren't all out yet, so it's unclear okay. why the United States wasn't hit very hard. Maybe it's just because we use legitimate operating systems and we patch. Ah. But um, it's interesting the different parts of the world how. Um, the infection rate is higher or lower, but certainly. So Windows released a patch for this, I think, in April or March. March, yeah. And uh, so, if you patch your operating system, you're unaffected. You're fine, right? Or if you have a, I was reading a report about 30% of antivirus stop. Um, Want to cry? Actually caught it. Cool. So, yeah, which good. which I'd love to see, and I think they should do this more when there's big incidents um, globally, but show how antivirus is performing, you know, consumer reports. Sure, you know, yeah, have a, have a yeah. gauge, you know, Silence did this, Symantec did this, you know. Because some, of, the, some of those this. companies are pushing the limit, and yeah. Yeah. others are not. Yeah, yeah. If you've got antivirus, you still got to update your antivirus. That's true. Right? Well, the, you don't update the antivirus, yeah. it's just useless. I, I, yeah. Well, so yeah. Silence is more like the machine learning, though, so it's looking at stuff coming across the bus, a little different animal. I have a, so I have a good friend that works for Silence. Oh, right on. And, and I, I think they're going in a whole new direction. Antivirus used to be just blacklisting. Yeah, signature, signature. But, but now it's much more neural networks, machine learning, and that's the future. Yeah. I, it's a different discussion probably, but it wouldn't surprise me 10 years from now if malware is a thing of the past. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. You're talking about baseline. There's a great optimistic for, viewpoint. Well, I I'd, I'd love to go for the optimist, but, but we're in cyber, so no, I, it usually goes the other way, I, unfortunately. The end of malware. I love <laughs> it. I mean, we have application whitelisting. I mean, a whitelisting approach is, of course, the most secure because anything that doesn't fall on that whitelist can't run. So mm -hmm. if you did that on a network, you also could stop uh, an attack like this. But uh, with these companies, they know more than government does. They know more than the media does. These big companies that have antivirus on hundreds of thousands of machines or millions, they can get all that data in real time. Mm -hmm. They can do their own um, scrubbing of, of mm -hmm. you know, essentially whitelisting, looking for anomalies. And that's how they feed, uh, for silence, that's how they feed their, their AI to learn more and more about what's sure. been bad. It's, it's fascinating. So let me ask your personal opinion. You don't have to represent the government. Oh, that's, like, this, this okay. is all uh, This is, this is my, my personal opinion. I got, I got to ask your personal opinion <laughs> because we're on the same yeah. kind of sphere here. Um, so uh, I was listening to the podcast that you sent me, and in there they mentioned that the uh, timestamp on that patch was from February. So Microsoft sits on these things. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, there's, there's, there's a business model, and then there's the security model, and they seem to be divergent in this case, right? They don't want to patch Windows XP because they don't want to encourage businesses to stay on XP to grind that out to whatever the ROI sure. is going to be forever. And on the other hand, you want the world not to grind to a halt. So right. do you sit on this patch? Do you release this patch? Which I want to know both of your opinions on this one. Sure. It was nice of them to release a patch that for was, That was benevolent. I think, yeah. very, I think very benevolent. Yeah. You know? I mean, there's some industrial systems or some healthcare systems or some other gear out there that's got an XP operating system, and those right. manufacturers haven't developed a product to run on something else. So unfortunately, there's places in the world that, got a, that are living with some of this. Should they, I, I think it's irresponsible. And, but and I'm actually, I mean, this could have been a lot worse. Because we all know, like, are there critical infrastructure systems still using XP? Sure. You know, sure. State of Hawaii is still using XP. In no, sure. no, no, no. no, it's but, not, no. but where this did show up is the the hospitals in England. You know, if the you, IHS, read, if you read yeah. that, and I don't know if anyone died from this. That'd be interesting. Yeah. I haven't but, uh, seen that statistic yet, but I, I did see uh, the statistics changed. Like when this first came out, I thought, oh, people are saying Windows XP is prevalent, and yeah. the NSA and. and National Health System in the UK. What I saw was that now the statistics say it's mostly Windows 7. That's what I, I read that today. 1% one, 1 was 1 XP. 1% is XP. Yeah. So and Monday we thought it was 150 million XP machines. So right, right. And I thought that was, oh my God, that's exceptional. But now Windows 7 makes a little bit more sense. I mean, people it's are good dragging people it out, have upgraded right? their operating system. I mean, they're still outdated, but yeah. You know, right, but no one wants to do this. <laughs> And they're well, afraid to go to 10. And seven, there was a patch for seven, but they didn't do the patching, right? So as you mentioned, right? So, you know, just you nor normal routine patch. maintenance, right? You got to right. do it. You got to stay up with it. And they were saying it could get into the backups. Yeah. So if there's uh, a time bomb in there, they could be delayed, get into the backups, and then even in your backups, when you restore them, 
you've got the virus again and it'll go out looking for other computers and, on the network. And so this was an opportunistic attack where it's a worm that just spread, you know, as it could. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not sure if it started by, by email, you know, or it just spread SMB. I mean, usually you block SMB at the firewall, but it's unclear. Mm. Uh, Maybe it's a USB stick? So I'm right in? Well, that's a lot of USBs to start propagating on uh, May 12th. True. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, that's sprinkling them in the parking lot <laughs> all over the world. Yeah. That's a big investment, actually. Yeah, I, no, think I it was an email. But yeah, there's still some <laughs> gaps out. of knowledge of, you know, mm. what, how else it might have spread beyond the obvious exploits that are built into the, this worm. I'm amazed at the, the gaps of knowledge we have even now after five, six days. Well, I think. Maybe can't always talk about it. Do you guys have? Do you have visibility on 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 things you know that are coming at you before the rest of the world? I mean, do you get some updates that you know everybody else is like? They find out three days later. No comment. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that's terrible. Well, I, I just hope so. That's just from my perspective. Right? I hope so too. So at least there are speculations that it's North Korea. Sure, we, sure. we see that. Sure. It is interesting. It's a really disappointing how unsuccessful it is. Uh, well, I'm. Imagine the attackers are. Yeah. So there were there were a few flaws um, in this malware, um, and they haven't made a lot of money. You would have expected yeah. an attack on a couple hundred thousand systems would make a lot of money, but very early on they they learned that um, there were some issues. So the Bitcoin addresses were limited, mm -hmm. and then uh, it wasn't an automated. System, and also, right? there's no reported. Uh, at least I haven't heard any reported people actually recovering their files. It's questionable if the attackers are actually tracking all the private keys to decrypt all yeah. the files. So I think once people started hearing that, the number of people paying the three hundred or six hundred dollar ransom just plummeted. Yeah. So there's there's they've only they hear less than a hundred thousand, I think. There's a, there's two tools there. Well, actually, there's three tools out that I read about, and one of them is Wana Kiwi. It's it actually looks at the computer's memory, and and scans to see if it can find the prime factorials, the P and the Q numbers they use in the, in the calculations, to calculate the actual secret key to decrypt this malware. So if people Good. haven't shut off their computer. So they did find a, have a workaround. Right, there's a workaround. Yeah, yeah. So, if you had, you had, as long as you hadn't rebooted your computer, right. I read that As soon as you now. reboot your computer, the chances are that memory block's been overwritten. Right. Yeah, so it's yeah. active memory, right? You have to keep Good. the power on. So there's a chance you can recover your files. Plus the NSA keeps reused keys. And that further keys. shows, you know, it's more amateur. Because there is ransomware out there, most of it, which we can't decrypt. Some of it is poorly implementing the encryption. Yeah, the PKI, right? Yeah, right. So. And this did, did this just sound like uh, there was one person in accounts payable handling all the Bitcoin transactions? There was. It's not automated mm. at all. Mm. So the, the, the podcast was listened to that you sent me. It was really interesting. I got it. Who was that from? So that was at risky.biz. Risky.biz, uh, that's Australia. That's a good yeah. one, yeah. So there's, uh, a couple of Aussies talking about that, and they're really good. Mm. And, you if you know, can't watch this show, that's second best. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. So, may, so maybe it was a test, right? So maybe it's a, a, that's, test, that's a test to see what kind of SMB ones are. I'm scared. You know, you know, what if this work? is testing the water? How do so, things, how do so, things so, crawl around? I don't know? think so, and this is yeah. why. So there's this exploit's been... Um, been seen already in the wild. Okay. So there's a good chance, actually, the other way around. This actually showed us that these com these computers might have already had malware, mm. maybe even from this exploit. Okay. So this really just highlighted, uh, you know, in a big flashy, you know, week that um, these vulnerabilities are being exploited and people have all these unpatched systems. Mm. Um, but it's possible that. These systems were already had malware. They were mining Bitcoin or sending spam or you know doing all that those botnet kinds of things. Gotcha. So uh, because this exploit's been out, so mm -hmm. so I think it's really just bringing that, to uh, attention mines, yeah. the the exploit you're talking about that mines Bitware. We found on the podcast uh, from Risky Biz. They said that that exploit that mines uh, Bitcoins turns off SMB. Oh. So it protects you from WannaCry. Huh? So if you're mining Bitcoin, they were saying it's, it's better to be mining Bitcoin than lose all your sure. files, right? It's, the, it's, so <laughs> yeah, some hour, it some hour it wants to defend its turf. Right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting that you say so. I heard from a healthcare a guy came from a healthcare um, symposium yesterday. Uh, at this, these folks were saying that it was first found in their backups. And I hadn't heard that. Hmm. Oh. And so the, and they, so they had lost their backups, and they had to go back a long ways. Like uh, he said, like thirty or forty days to find some that weren't infected. And hmm. so did they not you know, notice it and run into their back? Did it tie? You know, it's interesting that that, that was Even there. Even if you but. tested the backups, you might not know. 
you know, or, right, or, because or, the exploit is not active. Sure. So I, you, you might not be able to find it, except for 30% of the antivirus actually caught this thing, right? So we're going to take a break right now. Everybody, we'll be right back. Uh, come right back in about a minute, and we'll keep on going. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You can break rocks. You can be a master. Don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. With me here today are my exceptional co-host, Andrew Lanning, Andrew the Security Guy, and Mike Fafflin from the U.S. Navy Cyber Protection Command. Or is it team? Team. Team, okay. Sorry. You don't have your own command. No. no. He's working on it. Working on it. Someday you're trying to take over. Lieutenant Commander. Um, yeah. Soon to be, right? Yes. Soon to be. Yes. You're I'm here, I'm here uh, personally, though, not, oh, yeah, okay. not a representative yeah. of the government. He's just, just here. A disclaimer. To, he's here to share what he can. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You couldn't show up in uniform yet because he can't represent. It's it's uh, really difficult to get people from the NSA here. I, I wonder they, why. They don't even yeah. want to put their face on the screen. I wonder why. Yeah, I know. Some of these questions. Uh, yeah. I don't, so sorry. I don't know how to ask them. Uh, they just shut uh, me down. Twitter working right now, and we just got a comment uh, uh, here. Ma Mike got a rash from WannaCry. Is this true? It's true. I had to spend a Whoa. long time in the chair. Mike. Uh, really? I was going to so show you. Antibiotics? Or is it, is it, you it show us? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. We don't have FCC it's rules because so. we're not broadcasting. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> we can have the black fuzz, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. Yeah, you should just do it. Keep behind the screen, right? All right. <laughs> so who's the adult? So keep <laughs> There's the question I want. Number six. Let's do that one. Uh, who are the shadow brokers, Mike? <laughs> It's a great question. Well, they've been linked to Russia. What do you think? Right. Have they? I mean, they've been linked to Russia. What's that link? Is that a strong link? Is there proof there? I, I'm not an expert at shadow brokers. But yeah, what, what's interesting though is so shadow brokers, they, uh, they've they been releasing information about the equation group, which everyone thinks is the NSA, and um, how it relates to WannaCry is the exploits that are being used by WannaCry um, were leaked by the shadow brokers. So Microsoft released a patch in March, shadow brokers released this exploit publicly in April, yeah. which is interesting. So what that shows is the shadow brokers, when they see that Microsoft patched what was a zero day, they then released, well, now that exploit's known, so, or, or at least. Maybe, maybe they're just training yeah. us to do our updates. You know, maybe mm -hmm. they're all working together. I you know? hope that's true. Yeah. I hope I mean, people this, start this doing teach, updates This now. taught you that, right? I mean, if, if, it, if you have a plan to keep your company working 24-7 and keeping, making money, paying people, serving your customers, the best thing to do is never to go down. And the best way to prevent that, update your system. Have tested backups. Mm -hmm. Train your staff. Don't right. let this happen in the first Hopefully place. Hopefully, there's a good wake-up call for uh, most of the world. I mean, the U.S. Please. is pretty good. Again, the U.S. Yeah. You know, we weren't hit that hard by this, but most, a lot of the world, you know, China, Southeast Asia, uh, Middle East, they don't, they don't either. They don't patch. So. Hopefully That's what it, it seems like, right? Like, the whole world will be more secure if we all patch, because then you reduce botnet sizes, you know, from 10 million, sure. you know. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you reduce your threat landscape. Because a lot of those botnets are taking over machines that are just unpatched and vulnerable. Now, what's the history of shadow brokers? Have they been around for a while? Have they been active? <laughs> have, they been, have they caused trouble like this before? What do you know? He's working. That's a great question, Steve. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> he has no idea. So what about okay. Vault 7? Let's talk what about, about that, Vault 7? Do you know anything about WikiLeaks and Vault 7, mm -hmm. which is where they dump all the stuff that they get I, from people like shadow brokers? So uh, again, not my uh, area of expertise. So I think that's Vault Seven is more the CIA uh, leaks oh, okay. that came out. All right. Which was how we learned that our TVs are listening to us. Uh, now, uh, and, even that one. Yeah. Even that one. <laughs> I, I heard an interesting interview with uh, is it James Clapper? 
and former head of the CIA. Is that is that who James Clapp? And he was saying that you might not want to stop this exploit of the Samsung TVs. CIA is not supposed to spy on its citizens, but if a, a foreign actor, a bad actor, got inside the U.S. boundaries, inside the U.S. borders, and was operating inside of the country, you might want them to be able to spy on that person via a Samsung TV. Now, they don't want to watch me walk around naked in the house. I don't think anyone wants to watch that. My wife wants to watch that, but I wouldn't want to watch that. What but is he talking about? Spies. You might want so, to watch that. What does this have to do with <laughs> wanna cry? Is that wanna cry? Is that what we, we all wanna cry if we see him walking around? around. Like, You'd wanna yeah. cry Gee. if you see me walking Gee. around. Where's, this? I, I, where's the content on this program There is a question going? of, you know, like, do, are, are exploits potentially good? You know, if they can be used for good things I think versus they can bad. Be. You know? there's, but a, there's a balancing act. Because right? certainly, so NSA, they developed this exploit for good reasons. Well, if you think NSA does good things, which I, I think they I want to believe that. They, they, I do. They, Glass is half full. They defend America, it. right? And then, uh, but then it got leaked, and now it's been used, and potentially, I, again, people could have died from these hospitals where yep. systems were held for ransom. I have not heard ransom. that yet. And I haven't heard several it yet. days, so this but is But certainly, a good it's had a big impact, and so it's hurt people's health. Surgeries you, you could, delayed, that's, things that's like a that. Fact. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, um, I was with... Um, uh, uh, show last week, and Matt Rosenquist was there. He's IBM's um, cybersecurity strategist, and, mm. and for sure, um, not want to cry, but already there's been a patient on the table, and the gear needed was ransomed when they turned it on. Mm. So they bring in the IT guy in the operating room. Like mm. they're like, dude, you got to get this working now. So wow. there's been threats to life for sure, but not not want to cry related, but you know, ransomware related. So, so which want to cry yeah. exploits SMB. And one of my one of my kids uh, in their twenties asked me to, I, I kind of describe, in her terms, what this WannaCry does, how we exploit on a network on SMB, and tell me if I'm if I'm too off on this because here's how I described it: there's a hallway, and there's a bunch of locked rooms, and each one has a digital keypad, and someone finds out that there's a secret override code on all those dig digital keypads. So they go down the hallway and they try that secret override code on every single door. Okay. But somewhere in that last week, someone had gone around to five of those doors and updated the keypads to take out that secret override code. So only five of the doors can be entered. So five of the doors are vulnerable systems, whereas five of them have been patched and you cannot get them. Is that, is that close to how WannaCry works in a network? Can so, you tell us? Yes, I mean, okay. so, so it's a really good exploit. I mean, okay. it's a, this is a top, so I think Eternal Blue is the initial exploit, um, which was released by Shadow Brokers, but it's really effective. I mean, it, I don't know if it's 100%, but it seems um, very, if a system's unpatched, um, I don't know if it's a buffer overflow or what the mechanism is for, for running malicious code on the system, but it, 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 uh, it takes advantage of that open port for SMB and, and uh, it's able to run malicious code and then it does some other things, uploads the next payload. And, you know. So it goes out there to the network, see if there's any more machines on the network, any right. more computers, sees if this vulnerability exists. Right. If it does, knocks on the door, tries to exploit it. If it can, it's on the system. Right. That's interesting when you have uh, a, a mixed network, some XP, some sevens, some tens that have been patched. So some of your systems aren't vulnerable at all. Right. So those theoretically, you can keep those systems running. For Abs absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think most backups probably have not been targeted. It depends on how the backup is. Prepared. That's what I was wondering. Is I thought it was odd. A, yeah. Is the backup on a Windows Seven or you know, yeah. machine? Then maybe, but. Uh, mm. You know, maybe there's a good reason to go with cloud backups or another type of solution where sure. where it's you know a one so someone else is going to patch it if well, you're not and responsible. And to it do that. shouldn't it be it shouldn't be hot, right? I mean, your backup should be isolated. Mm -hmm. And it should be, and there should be some kind of rotation, right? Yeah. So you do not just one and, backup and check them too. Restore your backups once a while. Make sure <laughs> they work, right? People people mess that up. Say so, so, Mike. Put yourself into the security role, CIO role of a corporation. Right. What's your incident response like? You hear this is a couple of computers have got uh, ransomware. What do you do? Because they call you first. So f ransomware, unlike it. <laughs> so in this case, though, it's not a targeted attack. Right? When I think incident response, uh, if, it's, if it's just computers that are opportunistically uh, targeted like this, um, 
there's there's not an adversary actively moving across your network. So it's a uh, there's a big difference between a targeted attack versus an opportunistic attack. So this is opportunistic. If it was a targeted attack, I'd want to maybe take a little bit more time to understand, before taking any action on the network, what um, I want to understand all the indicators of compromise and where they are on the network. And I want to deploy signatures to my IDS. So information gathering at this point. Information yeah, gathering. Right. But mm -hmm. before really taking much action, maybe isolate a few, some systems. But um, you, the idea is if it's targeted, you don't want to alert the adversary well, that, right. that you Good know point. they're there because they could become destructive. They could change out their implants to something else so that you can't find their back doors that are hidden. So you clean them off, um, and they're still there. So there's a big difference between how you respond to a target attack versus an opportunistic. If it's opportunistic, there's no adversary actively watching what you do on the network. Um, which is the case with WannaCry. So in this case, you can just isolate those systems. Um, and in this case, we know it's it's a uh, ransomware. So maybe you wait until you get a decryptor that works, which most ransomware, you don't get that luxury. Right, right. But in this case, it seems like it, it wasn't the top experts that wrote WannaCry. So we, we, we could do that. It looks like yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, I mean, maybe just isolate those systems, patch the rest of your network, um, install a good antivirus, and then uh, you know maybe you can get the data back if if there uh, if there's data you want to get back. And you the don't crazy thing is most yeah. IT departments would inform everybody to take their systems offline, and they'd probably send out an email. Mm -hmm. I would well in this case because well, it's a rapidly spreading worm. You probably do want to disconnect the organization from the internet, right? Right. right. Immediately. If, and if there are systems, isolate them and then patch. And then you know, then you this know is a good case for subnetting yeah. your network, right? Finance has this, CIO group has this, right. and CEO and the marketing, they're all different networks that you can unplug from the collective to get them offline. So if they're infected, they don't affect anybody else. And right. You want to subnet that. So that takes good planning. Mm. And that's one of the things we fail at as US businesses Overall, I think we don't plan ahead very far. We have this mentality of just uh, get the shareholders their their cut, and then you know we'll take our bonus, and then six months later we do the same thing. We don't plan year over year how we're going to patch these systems, how we're going to secure these systems. Let's hire a CIO. Let's give them a budget, which is the, the <laughs> main thing you don't get, right? You get it to be well, a CIO. A lot of this is basic network hygiene, which is just not being maintained. So. Yeah. Very, that are very common hit. in business, very common yes. in municipal government with strained budgets. I mean, you know? it's hard. When right. you have an organization of 10,000 sure. machines, I mean, it's hard to keep them all patched. That's right, yeah. and if, especially if you only got one or two guys. Well, that's all good news, everybody. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us on the Cyber Underground. Thanks for being with us, Mike and Andrew. Thanks. As Aloha. always, you guys are exceptional. Everybody. Stay safe, everybody. Aloha.